Seeing us at 5.15, I'd like to call the Park and Rec meeting to order. I'd like to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible, indivisible and justice for all. Any changes to the agenda, Ginger? No. I look for a motion to adopt the agenda. Make a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Ernie made a motion to adopt the agenda. John has seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Is there any public input on anything? She's with the trail. Okay. No public input? I guess. You want to your... take the. You want to take the approval of the Mario Land? Yeah. So this was um, passed through the um, planning the planning commission. Um, but since this is on a parks bathroom, it does also have to or a parks facility. It also has to be blessed by you guys. Um, the um, pictures are of it's kind of a cartoony. Um, Raccoon, Chad, to bring it up. Shortcuts now. Oh, go to my complete. To complete. Yeah. Did you change them in there? I copied it. Well, yeah, I uh, guess I did because I thought we would use my complete file. Uh, main complete. Nope. But they're photos. Yeah. Oh, 22. I'm done. Wrong. There they are. All right. So this is done by a gentleman in Clintonville. Um, they'd be full of color. I think they're great. Um, they're relevant to the park area. Um, I know that some suggestions from the planning commission were to um, have maybe the fox say, um, the slogan for New London, or that we're pushing through the Economic Development Committee, um, is that we have has an address? Is that what you wanted it to say? Something in there about has yeah. the address, yeah. or maybe yeah, where that says we love New London, mm -hmm. um, or New London has an address, is an address, or something like that to coincide with that, and then the. East part would be towards the river. So that would be the river scene. And then the south is facing the, the skate park. Um, this one, staff suggestion was maybe a little wary about having a spray painter <laughs> encouraging vandalism, which I kind of agree with. Um, I think he could be doing something a little bit more constructive. <laughs> Than vandalizing our building. <laughs> That's up to you guys. I'm talking about a paintbrush. A paintbrush would be beautiful. <laughs> or, yeah, you can be painting a mural. So, those are those. Any questions, comments, or other? I kind of agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, with the spray painting, right? Yeah. The other two I like. Yeah. With the spray painting. And you have my ideas. Yeah. And from the Wolf River Art League members, Lori, um, she um, stated that he is a commercial designer. He is more than willing to take um, advice and take criticism and take that and make it into something constructive and nice so he can play with that one a little bit and work on that one yeah it was suggested to have him with paintbrush instead of the spray can and that was kind of what the planning commission sure. said was perfect looked a little better mm -hmm. anybody else have any other comments on it i yeah that's the facing the skate the bathroom yep. door yep mm -hmm. Okay, so we've been kind of fussing it around for the last week since we um, talked with Chad and um, because there's bathroom doors situated on that wall, we thought it might look cute if 
we had two raccoons, one a woman by the ladies' bathroom and one a man by the men's bathroom. And maybe the man is holding the skateboard, waiting for the bathroom. So that it, you don't paint the doors themselves. You just paint the wall with the raccoons on there. And maybe a little kid is with one of them, you know. So it would completely change. It wouldn't have a skateboarder in that like it is up there. It would have it would have raccoons standing waiting for the bathrooms. Sure. Yeah. Just a thought. I don't think that has to go through the planning commission for that. No. No. It's the same. Everybody here kind of yeah. agrees on it. It's the same artist. It, it would be the same style all the way around all four. Yeah. Sides. I think that's what's important. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else got any discussion on it? I look for approval of the Memorial Park murals. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. John made, <clears throat> excuse me, John asked, made the motion. <clears throat> you made, Mr. Grote made the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion's carried. Okay, the sculpture trail. Okay, remember last fall, we spoke with the young lady, Tony um, Hendrickson that came to the committee and wanted to put a sculpture in the parks. And we talked about how um, that is really great, um, but we feel like we maybe need to, to set down some guidelines and some rules about where we wanna put them, how we wanna put them there. Do we wanna do a rotation? Um, just some, some thoughts into it before just letting you know, people put their sculptures um, in the parks. Um, the Wolf River Art League has taken this um, back and decided to put together a committee to focus on sculpture art. Um, so I will be meeting with them tomorrow. I'd like to have a little conversation here um, with you guys about what I've seen as far as, um, you know, what other cities do, just kind of some thoughts that I put together. Um, right now, they are considering, they want us to consider the trail to be on the river trail, which runs from um, the NL, um, Lancer, kind of Shawano Street there, to, um, to Johnny's Bait Shop, also encompassing that, um, concrete pad that is already there. So maybe a bigger piece could go there. And then the city would put, um, like, we figure out a size, but I was thinking like a four by six or something concrete pad down that they would then um, have, from what I've seen, a stainless steel or steel mounting plate at the bottom of the sculpture about, you know, either half larger than the base or I've seen tabs that also work with some of the other sculptures um, so that you can drill down and secure them. Um, obviously, when we talked last, safety is our biggest concern with that. Um, sharp objects, things like that, that could hurt somebody would be an issue. Um, durability, because it's going to be outside. And that's a normal thing. Um, the two parks that I've seen are both year round outside the whole time. Um, some other things just to consider is the display period, things like that. The things in yellow I have um, that the over our thing is going to have to find out, um, figure out, you know, what what they want to do with it. Um, most of the communities that I've researched have um, pieces that are sold um, or purchased by a donor. So like First State Bank owns this sculpture. Um, then in all of the marketing, First State Bank has that you know, marketing piece as well. Um, just some things that we talked about in our last meeting, um, suggested artwork characteristics, you know, it's, it's suitable for family viewing. Um, it displays the high quality of skill. Um, I know that we wanted to 
depict a natural environment, you know, by the river, you know, kind of more nature based. Um, some of this is based off of research that I've done as well. Um, I think that device pieces that you know maybe show bright colors, dynamic shapes, things like I don't know if you've ever seen, and I have some examples um, of just beautiful pieces that are, are very expensive, but like, you know, movable like this, you know, it's a motorcycle. Um, and these are selling for a huge, you know, weight. This one here, the migration one is what I was thinking of that moves with the wind, which would be a really cool piece, you know, an eye catching piece. Um, so those are things that the Wolf River Earth will have to consider as they're going through the process. Um, also, you know, they're going to, I am not going to be in the art of, or in the business of securing art for, the, you know, for the parks. Um, they will have to do the call for artists. Um, and then present it similarly to the way that they present to um, the committees for their murals. So with that, because it is a, a piece that's touchable and movable, um, I would also suggest an identification clause, something that, that holds us harmless um, from any injury, whether that means if we need to help them set up for some reason, but I would have them require them to have to set up the piece. Usually an artist wants to be a part of that anyway. Um, and then also um, as it's sitting there, um, just, you know, uh, a lot of these groups have their own websites that have rules. Um, you know, they're not, they're just, out in the public so that people know, you know, don't touch them, don't climb on them. Um, those are rules that are also posted on site. That's why I like the trail. It, it you know, directs them kind of through the trail as, as a, a moving piece that they start at the canal and they end up down at Johnny's and they can see that rule, you know, the rule board when they come in. So those are just some, some thoughts that I have had. Um, I would like to take back or take to you or take to them tomorrow. My that you guys have. So, I guess that opens up the discussion. I would like to take it with the on the trip. We don't really want to do the end of the Correct. Correct. Tony, Tony's not here, but we'll bring it part of that trail. Well, um, we're just cons considering possibilities. You know, we've just opened it up for a discussion at our Wolf River Art Day meetings as well. And I had eight people sign up to be on our our uh, subcommittee, which is exciting because that's that's eight brains thinking about everything. Um, our our thought was that that part of the park system isn't like there's not a lot of purpose with it other than the walking trail. And with the walking trail already being there, it lends itself to a sculpture just being there. Um, with the new gazebo up and everything, it's just a it's really a nice place to to showcase things. We're kind of looking at honing it down and having it be homegrown art, like our murals. We are not going to pay people to make sculptures. This is going to be a volunteer force, and there's three people on that subcommittee I know can raise money confident that if we look at a sculpture that's $2,000 or $5,000 or $10,000 that we will make it happen. I'm not saying it's going to be tomorrow, 
this could be a 20 year build. This could be a 50 year build. It's just something that, that I think we, if we start it, it will continue and it'll be a good thing for the city, for, for people, folks coming into the area. So, and we're all, you know, we're thinking homegrown art. There's, there's a gal that graduated in 93 that is a professional sculptor that lives in Madison. And she just showed us two cranes and they're eight feet tall and they're made out of repurposed material. And so that got us thinking, do we want to have this be a repurposed sculpture trail that all the sculptures and that would tie them in and make it, you know, something that we could use repurposed materials for? Or do we just want to open it up? Because you saw the sculptures, many of those are not repurposed. Those are, those are amazing. Yeah. So we just feel like we're in the infancy and we're just getting rolling on it. And um, we're glad to have Ginger come and meet with us tomorrow and give us some, you know, some guidelines for what you guys want so that we can make it all happen together. If you're opposed to the repurposed stuff, tell us so that you know we, we feel like we're on the same wavelength. Can, can we do that as a park or do we have to go to the planning for this too? <clears throat> I believe just off the top of my head, the ordinance talks about specifically murals need to be approved by the planning commission because it's a quasi sign. That's kind of how the tie-in is because it's okay. signage quasi. Sculptures, I don't think are identified in the ordinance. So I think if it's on public property, oh. it would be just a we parks can, and rec we committee can do it for park and rec decision. Yeah. Okay. Right. Off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, just from what I've seen, the a big push to have sculptures in cities is is a lot of economic development, a lot of tourism. People come. Though I went in Stevens Point, there was cars from Illinois, Michigan, Minnesota, all in the parking lot. That that came to see that trail because it it's the Stevens Points one is pretty cool because <laughs> it's it's more in a setting like Hatton Park where it's a hiking trail. But I think it's a great idea to do some sculptures. Uh, the concern I would have is the repurposed stuff. Uh, I think some people would be turned away by having uh, you know they have stuff they got out of the river some you know, garbage or whatever that they make statues out of. I, I guess I'd, I'd like to see it kept classy. Um, I like the statues you guys presented, but yeah, the repurposed stuff, I guess I'd be a little concerned about. And I think the same way, Tim. And I saw those cranes and I couldn't believe that it was repurposed materials because <laughs> they look like cranes, so. You guys have something up at Senior Center too, don't you? That, that sculpture at the Senior Center? That one was the one that was brought. Oh no, the or the Eiffel, oh, the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower or the. Tower? Where are you talking about the the flower? flower. That's a flower. Yeah. That yep. was all material taken out of the Wolf River. That flower. Yeah, and that was kind of the start of this. You guys go to the Bot Botanical Gardens in Green Bay. I, I have yes. They washed ashore. They, yeah, and they got repurposed. Plastics, mm -hmm. plastics, everything out of Lake Michigan, and it looks awesome. It's unbelievable. What I think there's a tactical way of doing repurposing. And right. There's, yeah, yeah that's kind of like what we're. Thinking. So you know, each you, piece would still have to be approved by us. Yeah. So yeah, it has to be approved anyway. So I right. I, but if I could take twelve hubcaps and make something cool that <laughs> you're like, those are hubcaps. Mm -hmm. That looks more like a you know sturgeon or whatever you know. Um, I've seen. Horseshoes made into things. I don't know if anybody went out to the art show this year, but some gal made a goat out of horseshoes. Yeah. It was very cool. Yeah, it as long as, long as you're as long as we're approving them, it doesn't matter right, really if it's right. repurposed or not. But I get what Tim is saying. Some yeah, I mean too, some I artists' too. eyes with repurposed stuff is <laughs> way different than what no propane tank. But it seems to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't we, we don't, don't need nothing like that in Appleton. Appleton. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we don't need that. Okay. So, so one of the reasons that we, I think we were thinking 
have it nature inspired because nature is pleasing to all of us. And so if somebody's going to do a rendition of the wind, you're going to be able to see that that's the wind and not look at it as what a bunch of trash. Right. So I think from the committee, subcommittee, from the Art League and this committee, I think we can make it work and it can be really beautiful. And, and with the mixed bag of ideas of new art and repurposed art and stuff, I'm, we can mix that too, right? And we don't get it all one solid way. Absolutely. I'd like yeah. to see it reflect up maybe the history of New London. I'd love a steamboat. And stuff like that, yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And sure. Logging or whatever, you know, whatever works into the history yeah. of, of New London. I'd like to see that as a theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be exciting. Is there any ideal of the number of concrete pads we want to put on that trail? <coughs> I don't want it to be overpowered by them, but I but I want it to be enough that people come to see, you know, take their time with it. I think. How long is that stretch? Good question. I'm not exactly sure. I'll have that, I'll have that figure for you. Today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> GIS. <laughs> How long is that area? That's what we're going to look up right now. Right now. Uh, Keep talking. It'll take a little bit. <laughs> do, do a little math there to figure this out. <laughs> What does it have to be that? Quarter, oh, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. It's gotta be a quarter mile. Quarter mile. Yeah. I think it's longer than that too, yeah. So we we wouldn't have anything probably from the it's gotta, yeah. Kwanzaa hut thing. So you're talking about behind Johnny starting? Um well start starting now. at the NL. Yeah. Oh wow. Because that concrete pad is there. Charles D. Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of there. So our feature piece more than likely would be on that concrete pad. Oh, that thing's because there's there's three four things on there. Are the revolving piece on the uh, uh, Berniger Trail? There, there's a bench and some other stuff, memorials and stuff along there, and that doesn't look like it's cluttered. Right. And that's in a short distance. Right. Because if you don't put enough, it's going to be it's not going to attract Enough. if you got like five items and but if you put too many they're too close you're not getting anything it's just moving to the next thing you don't yeah care. so that's definitely something that i want you guys to give me suggestions for that's going to depend on the size of whatever they're putting up too mm -hmm. that's a, huh? there's a lot of trees yeah. over by here no, half a mile so yeah, just short area. but keep in mind this is all private through here right so that'll be subtract that right so that's say 2000 feet minus five 600 right so 1500 ish give or take and then what did you say that pad size was other than that is six foot you know nothing huge yeah. Yeah. so is everybody okay with approving approving this as long as they're going to bring it yeah, this committee right. before. Yeah. Yeah, a question for Ginger first. Mm -hmm. With the other municipalities, insurance wise, does it go in the city's insurance? Does the no, club take out insurance? The, the, the artist or the Wolf River Art League would retain the ownership of the piece. Okay. And then we would we they would lend it to us to it would be an agreement yep. that would be written up so by, it's, by it's the vandalized or something. Right. It would be their insurance. Their yep. Yep. And it'll take care of the grass and stuff around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike, who carries insurance if somebody gets hurt? You can put that would be on the on the artist or the Wolf River Art League. If you do, um, if what Ginger's saying the, that that philosophy or that route, you could have the artist or the Wolf River Art League carry the insurance, make the city an additional insured on that policy, and have the identification identify the city from any liability with that similar to what we do with special events you know so anytime a private group has a special event on the city and that's what civmix recommendation was for it i've talked to them about it so perfect you got anything jim oh. otherwise i look for approval for the memorial park murals make a motion second 
Steve wrote, made the motion, seconded by John Ast to approve the mural, Memorial Park mural. No, or the sculpture Oops, this is the trail. Yeah, all right, the sculpture yeah. trail discussion. So do we need do we need approval for that then, or just just discussion? Just to, maybe you can authorize Ginger to yeah. what her recommendation was to keep working with the uh, Wolf River okay. Art League on that concept, with the understanding, the insurance yeah. that we just talked about, and the understanding of um, you know, right. those little things that Ginger talked about with uh, bringing the sculptures back for approval. All in favor of the approval for the sculpture? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Ginger. Okay, so um, at our last meeting, the school district came to us and wanted us to partner with them on funding the new tennis court complex at the school district site. Um, I put together a summary of the current usage of shared space um, and just summarized that in my memo. Um, also looked up some, some stats for this year currently. Um, obviously 2020 and 2021 was a little different. Um, so I did go back to 2019 and bring up those numbers. Um, currently the school district uses Memorial Fields, Hatton Stadium, the Washington Center, um, and I say with no charge, but we do charge the, them for the field use, um, just based off of the supplies that they use and then any overtime hours put into those, um, to groom those fields. Um, with, um, the Washington center alone does 362 bookings per school year for the Catalyst Academy. Um, that is their charter school at the old senior center building. If you're familiar with that, um, they use the facility as their, their FIAD time. Um, the track practice is their five times a year dance team has 41 permits with us, which are about two hours a piece. Um, the 4K preschool group uses it two days a year. And then the, at the Aquatic and Fitness Center, they use the Aquatic, Aquatic and Fitness Center, the swim team, 100 hours a year. Um, that's August 9th through November 5th. They do pay us for that uh, $7,000 a year. Um, Hatton, just a variety of end of the year picnics, cross country meets, um, and then, like I said, stadium and Allen Fields um, Memorial. They do all of their high school softball practices there and then approximately 27 games per year. Um, since January 1st, we have had 300 different permits issued for those facilities. Just to give you an idea of the volume of space that they use, the permits that they use through the city. Um, and that is since I wrote this up on April 29th. Um, the city's, the, the, the recreation department uses their facilities very little. Um, when we can, we use the intermediate school for bad weather days for Camp Hatton and often frequent the, the Parkview Elementary School's um, playground just because it's high and there's not a lot of bugs and mud over there, which is nice. Um, in back in the day, um, when I was uh, the recreation coordinator, I have used the choir room, the intermediate school gym for some basketball leagues, the rock wall, I would do programming with that. Um, we have not used those facilities since 2014. Um, not based on them not telling us that we couldn't, we just didn't have the programming for it. Um, we do, our department does need space right now, and we've spoke to them about the possibility of using a facility for, um, gymnastics, tumbling and those things, but they do not have a facility that we can currently set up those programs in because it is a long-term storage with the equipment use that we need for those facilities or for those programs. Um, the last we updated this um, was in 2009. 
I'm guessing from history that that was, it looked like not been addressed since like 97, <laughs> since Chad came in and then Ch Chad came in and did that. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about all of that. Um, so you're looking for our approval to approve this? No, I'm just, I know that you wanted to have a little bit more of a conversation about facility use and what, what looking at giving for the tennis courts could possibly look like, um, whether that be us using those facilities or not, um, and whether or not they'd be available for us. Um, I think that we should start here first and then look at giving money to a tennis court. But that's up to you guys and, and how you feel about it. Uh, kind of to tie in, in, in with this whole thing, uh, someone mentioned to me about the youth baseball, about uh, we do the diamonds. Obviously, we chalk the diamonds and Mm -hmm. and get them ready for ball games. But what about on weekends? We have to send our people out there for time and a half to do diamonds. Is it possible that the youth baseball could do their own diamonds? They, use our, they could use our chalking stuff and, and groom their own diamonds. I think anything's a possibility. I don't. I I know that we do charge them um, for their supply, just like just like the school district. Um, we send them an invoice annually. Um, I'm not saying we have to charge them right. to, to do the diamonds. I mean, I'm sure well, they right. can do them so themselves. The way that work, works out is like, we donated 4,000 field dollars to redo the racetrack diamond, $2,000 to do a memorial, and we repaid to do all the diamonds down there at Pfeiffer. So we donate money back to maintaining the diamonds. With that, the city does come in and do the diamonds before our games. Um, if you go to a fee-based system where we would pay for baseball would pay a fee or softball would pay a fee to do the diamonds, then the parents are going to expect a lot better diamonds from the city to be. And then I guess be, I'm not seeing that we should charge them. Uh, could they do them themselves on the weekends? I mean, during the They during come the and week, do the I mean, first one, we do them the rest of the day. If they do the original yeah. grooming on Saturday and yeah. Sunday, they do. Yeah. And then we do the we do the rest of the day. And yeah. I understand that that's like that, but we also donate money to yeah, keep I, I the really, diamonds I going. That. I'm, not, I'm not running the, the league down by any means. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just I know. I'm that, just trying to, so everybody understands that it's not just baseball and softball aren't just taking resources from the city. We're also giving back the resources. Mm -hmm. Like when I was president, every time Chad called and wanted to do another diamond, the city would chip in, the school district would chip in, softball would chip in, and, and uh, that's all four, right? I think I got all four. Yeah. But all four of us go together and pay a fourth of the cost of. Are you guys kind of familiar with what happens at Hatton Stadium? Uh, basically, on the baseball field out there, of course, it's the American Legion and the city team and the high school play, you know, on that field. And up to this point, okay, uh, the majority of the maintenance and the cost for the materials have been supplied by the Hatton Stadium Foundation, okay? Uh, you know, when they redid all the fields and, and, you know, the irrigation and the drainage for the systems, you know, that all came from a private organization, okay? Uh, the teams, okay, when they get prepared for it, they do the diamond layout, okay? The, both the Legion and the city team. I'm not too sure about the high school, but I assume they do it too. They line the fields is what you yeah. mean, yeah. And, you know, and, and you may, and so, you know, we've been very fortunate to have a few organizations like that, that picked up a lot of costs. And that's not going to be a thing that's going on forever. <laughs> okay. uh, 
So, you know, I think we have to, if we're going to plan on doing something, you have to look at what all of those real costs are, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of where the money came from. That's why I'd like to have maybe for our next meeting, just I put it in here now rather than waiting, you know, for future agenda items because it kind of ties in with the, with the tennis courts and all this other stuff. Maybe Ginger could look up some stats on what costs and stuff like that, just so we have an idea what, what it is. Sure. Yeah. That's all I have on that. To bring this back to the tennis courts, um, this agreement is between the city and the school district. I'd be concerned of like what the citizens of the city could use the tennis courts, at, you know, because yeah, you can use the tennis courts for a park and rec um, tennis, you know, a program. Program. Yeah. But what about the average citizen in town? Right. Can they go and use the courts? So I, I, I'd be concerned about that. Yeah. Yep, and that's definitely the the questions that we need to ask them when we I I can bring them back to to talk a little bit more about it, or we can get together. Um, I know you and I think Fred were going to work with Rachel and I and and, I and kind of sit down and talk to Scott John. and John. Okay, so we can do that next. That can be our next step and have those questions for them. Yeah, the baseball does the same thing with diamonds. I mean, set up a schedule. Yeah. And I would think if you had tennis courts, you'd have to come up with some type of a schedule so that the public can use them. You don't want to pay for them, you can't use them. I could see that being an issue, but. Mr. Roberts, I had a conversation with, uh, with some of the school board and stuff like that leading up into the, the tennis courts and stuff. And, and I just, I mentioned the same thing. I, I didn't feel comfortable with spending tax dollars, citizens dollars and them not being allowed out there to use it whenever they want. I mean, it can't be shut down. They want to go out there and, and park hours, you know, that should be allowed. So that was definitely a concern in, in conversations. Um. I talked to Judy a little bit about it, just filled her in because it's a lot of money that they're asking. Um, it would definitely be coming out of our capital project list, just like it would be if we were going to resurface those courts or redo the courts at Hatton Park or, you know, a piece of equipment that we're going to buy. Um, so we're going to have to chisel something out of that budget to give them um, any portion that would be considerably amount to be a partnership with them. So, um, I don't know. And then in running to that, it's gonna open up our parks for other opportunities too, because we wouldn't have to maintain our tennis courts. You know, yeah. we could pick up pickleball, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So well, this is just a discussion item then. Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just to bring it back, I want to make sure that we talk um, a little bit before we meet with them again, because I think that we should meet with them again soon, because I know that um, they it's been a while since they came and presented. Last to conversation us. I had, it sounded like they were going to start moving on, on them yep. items. Yeah. Do you know off the top of your head how much you're asking for? They did not propose anything yet. So that's one thing, you know, to think about is, is their tax base versus our tax base. It's a lot wider than ours. Um, so is it that kind of ratio that they're looking at? Um, their Ginger, surplus I'm not, is a lot use? bigger than our surplus. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure hundred percent, but I know one of the school board members when I was talking about this or when we we're discussing it said that if the city were to team up with them, there might be grants out there too that can fall into place. Partnership as grants, partnership, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even just signing a, a, you know, that we're on board with it is is a huge part of that, I'm sure. I would like you and Tim, if it's not open year round to city residents, it would be a tough sell. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even on board if we can't get our citizens in yeah. there. Right. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with the ones we got? That's what I said. We can we can we can pull them up ourselves. Then, okay, we open them up to what? <laughs> There's a lot of opportunities. You can have extra. Then we still got to put stick money into our own to update them. Correct. I spoke with Luke 
And the Hatton Park ones are beyond repair. They would have to be raised and redone probably if we were going to do anything with them. Um, he, he has big thoughts and he thinks that he could pull that up himself, which I mean, deconstruction is, you know, a pretty. If the city, if the city has uh, the cheapest option, if we're able to use the courts at the school, there's no reason we would need the Hatton courts right. along with no. Pfeiffer and uh, no. Abraham. So I mean, I, I just keep the Pfeiffer and Abraham and then use the ones yep. at the school. I mean, that would save yep. us maintaining you know, four courts. Well, they, and that's where I brought up that they repurpose some things into like a pickleball court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have to get those courts up to the standard that, that they would want for the high school. Correct. So, oh, you know, we right. could just play a blacktop. Right. Thing for sport court, to, there's a right. there's a really nice layover court that they make that's great for recreational yeah. use. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. good for high school use. No. Yeah. It, it, actually illegal for high school use. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, that's why they can't have any meets here right yeah and you wouldn't have to replace them all either the courts you pull them up and still make open green space and, and mm -hmm. for future use yeah. mm -hmm. so i think that one abraham gets used quite a bit by it does i mean by odd you see kids I in there see, playing like baseball or whatever mm -hmm. yeah and you see always people in there so i think that was one that we would I probably want to look into keeping it'd be a, it, it would be a dirty shame to shut all in down right. because there's so many people in the neighborhood that are use it they can't well, go would. to school. We, would still yeah. update, uh, we'd, we would still be able to upkeep these but at a lot lesser cost because right. you can put that sports floor yeah. down that's good for recreation but the high school can't use it. No, I was just no. going to say Chad has a nice printout too of, of some, some sports courts yeah. too that are virtually maintenance, maintenance free mm -hmm. and, and I shouldn't say cheap but they're, they're cheap. Yeah. They last a long to, time. Yeah. Yeah. Cheap compared to Compared to what we're talking about, yeah. yeah. So it, it, depending on the dollar amount, this agreement just looks like an awful lot of school and an awful little city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just seems it's not weighted quite correctly. Time to look at it. Yeah. 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 And the opportunity with them asking for to be a partner with that. And Jim brings up a great thought is that we do have Hatton Stadium and it's going to cost us money to re renovate that anymore. And I'm not sure how long the Hatton Stadium Foundation can carry us through that. Um, and as you see, the school district is the main user for that facility. So that's a thought too, to add to that. As another partnership in the future. As another yeah. partnership in the future. <laughs> yeah. Well, that all we got this is just yeah for discussion, yep. you know? just that if you're on if you spoke to me before that you were interested in that conversation with the school district we will continue that okay okay for the bid reviews um chad's, chad's got go that, that huh i can take that one so uh last week friday we had the bid opening uh, as you know we've been working on uh, this audio video upgrade project, it includes um, the upgrades to all the microphones in here, the audio system back here, there would be new point to zoom cameras, four of them on the wall so that uh, Ginger and I are, well, not me anymore, because I'm sitting down, but yeah. Ginger's not using this 1980 um, style camera anymore uh, for the council meetings and then the committee meetings. It also does quite a bit of upgrades in the back because everything that those cameras and everything are in a old analog system and this would all be a digital <laughs> system. So basically none of the older equipment can talk to the newer equipment because analog and digital, you know, you couldn't get it to work, but it doesn't pay to try to retrofit that. So everything in the back by Josh um, for the video um, switchers to when you have the council meetings, you know, Josh is switching between the cameras on the TV screens. Um, all that equipment has to get upgraded. Um, and then also the video servers. So there's several broadcasting servers that uh, we use back there. And those were installed, I think in 2009. Um, so they are quite old, but uh, those video broadcasting servers have on our cable access channel, have all the videos and all the scheduling for the videos that are played back on the cable access channel. Also the bulletin board and screen. So you, if you see the cable access channel, there's that in between videos, you see the announcement screen where it's got the bulletin 
announcements or PowerPoint presentation that comes up with a little weather on the side. Those all got to get uh, upgraded as well because we're fighting to keep those things um, going because they're quite old. So um, the very in-depth project. We worked with Camera Corner originally uh, just to kind of give us the upgrade to um, upgrade plan. And this, I'm showing you the bid specs right now that were put out for this project. Um, like Bob was just mentioning before the meeting, it's it's a very uh, in-depth system that you need. You have a lot of moving parts, and you got to make sure all those moving parts talk to each other. So there are four pages of schematics that were needed to put together to make sure everything works. So very complex project but we wanted to make sure that everything talks and communicates and is going to work just to make sure you know try to put this thing together um we only had one bidder um after the whole bid process we did advertise like we normally do with things like this uh the camera corner was the low bid only bid um but you can kind of see by the base of what i just showed you with the in depth of the project the cost of this um their bid is $115,610.88. So a very um, expensive project, but a very needed project. As we know, the, the audio system in this room is failing. The speakers have already failed. That's why we're using the temporary speaker um, in here. Um, like I said, the media servers in the back are failing. It's, it's time. And all this, all that money comes out of the cable fund, right? So it's already Correct. financed by the cable fees. So it's not like city money. It has well, to be used for that. It's city money, but as you guys know, we have um, on your cable bill, you'll see a franchise fee. And that franchise fee goes to the municipality that's in. And the city has been putting that money, <coughs> franchise fee money, in, directly in the cable fund. And then over time, that's paid for the cable program. Josh's wages are paid out of that. So it's not technically tax dollars that are paid for the, for the, um, for the cable program. So we have, I believe, Judy's last report, um, and she'll talk about it tomorrow night because she goes through that every, I think we're just short of $300,000 sitting in that fund right now. So we can definitely afford this upgrade, this project uh, with that. Um, and I'll just kind of give you a little, this is a, a supplement that, um, that Cameron Corner did provide. And I mean, they, they went through every little thing that they need, $5 cables and connections, $8 and it is itemized to 18 cents for these yeah, 22 blah, blah, blah. Cents. yeah 22 cents for 450 linear feet yeah. of this cable so i mean they went through it's itemized to a t for everything that we i mean for our special screw that we need for the rack you know six yeah. <laughs> so we know exactly what we're getting into um timing wise um if if you guys approve it and the council approves it um we would sign a contract with them I do have a concern with uh, supply lead time. They, they said that right off the bat, just in the day and age that we're in, they don't know some of these products, if they're gonna be on back order and how long, so. But I guess um, my uh, recommendation to you guys is to um, recommend to council to award the contract to Camera Corner for the audio video upgrade project. That's very intense, very good. My question right now, we're going to do that. How much do we have to do to this? Some of the other stuff in this room. Mm -hmm. uh, one time was brought up putting outlets in here. Mm -hmm. Are we thinking anything about having to do anything in that direction? Yes. That's not in this project. Right. It's not in this my project, head. but. Yep. Phase two, I guess, would be um, out of the cable fund because it's part of the broadcasting system that we've got. Um, we've talked about removing the horseshoe and putting in um, movable tables, but then having the outlets in the floor so that when you guys bring your laptops, you can actually plug them in decently. Um, the microphones are all wireless microphones that we're upgrading to, so we don't have to have the goose necks sticking out anymore, so they can be moved around pretty easy. Um, but yeah, that would be the second phase of things. We'll talk about how that would proceed. Yeah. Uh, it's just with that, there'd still be 178,000 left in the cable fund because it is 298,000 right now. Yeah, I think it was just short of 300,000. Yeah. So, yep. so that's a that's, good, that's that's a good comment. Dave. People won't think they're not going to get a street done. 
Right. Doing <laughs> Correct. Gotta so let them know where the, the, the body's coming the from. Court? <laughs> yeah, or the tennis court. We just get them talking about that. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. So good thing you bring that up to people. People realize that. Yes. <laughs> That's been saved over many. Right. Right. Over much time for mm -hmm. these upgrades. And how old is the server? Which one? The, yeah. I think those were put in in 2009. Sure. Richard, that was one of my first projects Richard yep. and I worked on. So. so, I mean, okay, 2009 to today, how many years is that? And for a computer to work that long, that's yeah, that's old. And uh, Ginger said she zoomed at last meeting last night, and she said it was just hard to. It's you know, it's hard it's to nearly impossible. To hear. I zoom in on it almost every day, and it just goes in and out. And right. Chad works on it. Him and I text and email back and forth during the meetings, and it's in and out. It's hit and miss. Some some days will go all day. Right. It'd be great. Yeah. Next meeting, it's just some microphones yeah. are really good, and you got to turn the volume down, or you blow your ear drums yeah. out. And other microphones you can't hear. They crackle. It's it it's due. I've changed cables. I've changed the location of the cables on this thing, and it's <laughs> it's. Chad, I'm yeah. thinking that's older than I am. That's what I was just. Saying. <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing. Sure, it is. I think we've got our money's worth out of it. Yeah, yeah, also. absolutely. It, it's needed. It really is. And then I can't imagine the audio is any better on, like, YouTube channel when people are trying to listen right. to it and stuff. So right. well, we've been actually have a couple couple complaints about yep. that. Yeah, as well. So it, it, it's due. And people are are going to the YouTube's. I mean, mm -hmm. they are. Yep. There's forty or fifty views watching our committee meetings. So that's. And it would be nice once we get all this up upgraded. The council meetings, we do the old fashioned way with the big cameras and we only broadcast that on um, the cable access channel. So we're not broadcasting the council meetings on YouTube like we are the committee meetings. But with the upgrade, we can do it all. We could broadcast it all, cable access channel and YouTube you know, seamlessly. Any other comments on it? I was just wondering why this is under park and rec and not finance. Okay. Um, years ago, there used to be a cable commission, like the mm -hmm. cemetery commission and police fire commission. Um, and that cable commission would meet every once in a while and it just didn't really need to meet anymore. So per the ordinance at that time, they disbanded the cable commission and they put in the ordinance, they put the responsibility of the cable programming to the parks and rec committee. Good question. Good history question. Mm -hmm. I look for a motion to approve the audio video upgrade project. I'll make that motion. Audio video project. Rich, you made the motion. I have a second. Second. Steve wrote made the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved. Actors report. Okay. Um, since we missed the April meeting, I do have some service anniversaries. Jane Murphy completed three years in April. So thank you for being with us, Jane, for three years <laughs> and sticking with us. And then coming up, we have Jim Thorpe. Um, he's got nine years of full time coming May 14th and 20 years total with the city on May 30th. So that's kind of fun. Um, he started the spring before I did at the Aquatic and Fitness Center as a lifeguard. So um, otherwise, um, you all have seen the special events permits that we've had coming through. Um, the May Day Festival is this weekend down at Memorial Park. Um, we also approve the Memorial Day celebration at Taft Park. I encourage you to go to those events um, coming up. Uh, just kind of get the word out about June 3rd. It's the last, uh, first Friday in June. Uh, Bazaar After Dark will be coming to New London. That is a Fox Cities Chamber event that we're a member of as well. Um, and they will be shutting down north water street from one o'clock p.m in the afternoon to 10 o'clock p.m um there will be different types of artists and a featured artist with the wolf river um, art league and then they will also be doing some um music and and drinks and dancing and just uh, it sounds like a fun event if you go on their facebook page um they do try to bring tourism into town for that night um i've heard there's a following of people that go all over the place that they've had them in Nina and um, little shoot and um, different places. It looks like a fun event. So I encourage you to get the word out about that. Also that we will be shutting down traffic at 1 PM. So that's a big 
that's a big deal that I'd encourage you guys to spread the word positively about that. Well, one thing when I, I spoke with Mr. Nevins, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, he, you know, gave me a pretty uh, good conversation about it. And he's estimating that their average attendance on this one night, four or five hour thing is 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. Oh. And of course, you know, that draws in, you know, so they're advertising this all over, you know, the valley here. So, right. So it, it'll be a big event. Um, I encouraged them to reach out to Jim um, because obviously Taft Park is right down there um, on that site. So um, wanted him to make sure that he got their blessing or they got his blessing as well for that. Um, other notes and projects, Luke and I are currently filling, um, interviewing applicants for the full-time parks caretaker position, good, um, applicants. So we'll hopefully be hiring some two individuals for that position. Also adding to the next agenda, hopefully, um, I met with a boy scout that wants to propose a project to the department and to the committee. Um, for a storage rack for winter equipment that he would like to have at the sled hill. Um, for those of you that have been on the committee, um, they um, built the um, life jacket loaner station down at um, the boat launch and then also the shelter out at the dog park. So that's something that the Boy Scouts do to earn their Eagle Scout. Um, just a couple other things. We're <coughs> celebrating Arbor Day and Earth Day um, last week and this week. The poster contest winners I put up just for viewing. Um, they went along with a theme of trees bring us together. Um, then we did a program with Ranger Services and planted some trees over to Hatton Park. And then Thursday, I will be meeting with the eighth grade students in Hatton Park to pull um, invasive species out of the trails over there. Um, Another big project that we'll be working on is uh, installing cameras, um, some new security cameras around the park. So that'll be something that will be coming up in your future. So any questions? That's all I have. Yeah, I don't have anything. Anybody in the committee got anything? I'm not actually on the committee. Can I bring something up though? Sure. Um, we were wondering if we could possibly look at putting sharps containers in at the parks. Sure. Um, we pulled a few needles out of the city parks we could before our baseball and softball tournaments. Mm -hmm. Not bad, huh? Yeah. Um, don't know if it's necessary. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just something to discuss. You know, if it has to be a future agenda item or something, but hopefully it would make people at least in. dispose of them in the right spot instead of yeah. wherever they feel like dropping them yeah. yeah we pick them up all the time franklin park's a hot spot so i don't see why we can't just they're cheap put them in anybody got anything else for a motion for adjourn i'll make a future oh yeah future agenda items do you want to did that. Future agenda items, Ginger? Um, just the Boy Scout for sure. Boy Scout presentation, tennis courts, and I'll probably come back with sc some sculpture trail discussion again. I would imagine. You were to get us some. And the baseball, yeah, youth baseball, youth softball, use. Would you put the sharps in? Um, I don't think we'd have to. You guys can just don't. So I can just. Say it. Uh, somebody's going to ask me as soon as we get out of here. So I yeah. say they're going to get installed then. Yeah, I don't think it doesn't have to go through this or okay. I'll look for a motion for adjournment. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie made a motion. Ernie made the motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Jim Yeager seconded. We're adjourned. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.